Okay, hi there. Welcome to a short video walking you through a data response question on the impact of changing costs and revenues on the profits of house builders. Let's take a look, first of all, at the extract. So here we have an extract looking at some of the factors impacting the profitability of leading house builders in the UK, in the UK including the Barclay Group and also Barrett's Developments. This is perhaps a good moment, if you're watching this video, to press the pause button and take a little time to read through the extracts and think about uh, some of the areas uh, that might be useful when you're answering the question that's about to come up. So having skimmed through the extract, uh, let's just pick out one or two things. Uh, the first paragraph is about rising costs. Sparkly Group is a house builder warning of rising costs, in part due to Brexit and also the, the supply crunch related to the pandemic. Uh, the, but the London-focused developer said it's likely to deliver a pre-tax profit of £520 million, but cautioned that there were some significant inflationary pressures in build costs, materials and skill shortages, rising prices for copper and steel, and that overall the costs of production, um, according to Barrett Developments, are expected to be some of that 4 to 5% higher this year offset by the strength of the housing market. If you look at the bottom paragraph there, we're told that demand for new homes, new build developments, is now back at level seen in the two years before the pandemic. And a little hint there that the impact of government policy, tax incentives, such as a temporary freeze on stamp duty, has added to the number of people looking to buy a house instead of renting. So quite interesting, the extract's really about feel like, almost like two competing pressures on the housing market. One is rising costs, and the other is a surge in demand as the economy recovers from the pandemic. Here's the question that we'll go through, that we'll walk through. With the help of a cost and revenue analysis diagram, examine two factors likely to affect the profitability of UK construction companies. This is a 15 mark question for Edexcel, but I'm sure you could tweak this question for your own example if you're following something different. Deliberately, I put in the question here with the help of a cost and revenue analysis diagram. I could have chosen the phrase with the help of a diagram. And then you have that choice to make about whether to use supply and demand analysis or to use the slightly more technical cost and revenue analysis. Uh, so look to see if it does say, with the help of a diagram, think about what you're expected to draw to reach the highest levels of analysis. Now, for a 15 mark question, we only have to produce four paragraphs, two analysis points, two knowledge application analysis points, and two evaluation points. Uh, for the Excel board, a 15 mark question would uh, you would only have about, gosh, 15 to 20 minutes. So it's not an essay question per se. So here's the first of my four paragraphs. Uh, one factor affecting the profitability of construction companies, so I go back to the question, is the 4 to 5% increase in build costs mentioned in the extract. So you get an application mark there. House builders are being affected by an increase in the world price, the global price of copper and steel. Then build your chain of reasoning. This means that their variable and marginal costs of supply have risen, which is shown in my diagram. I'll take you through the diagram uh, just in a second or two. If MC and AC shift upwards, then for a given level of demand, given level of average revenue, uh, the profit maximizing construction firms will likely reduce or contract supply from Q1 to Q2. And whilst unit prices rise from P1 to P2, we see that total supernormal profits have been cut. Higher costs cause profit margins to be squeezed lower. So my first KA point is saying that these bill costs are rising by perhaps 4 or 5%. That's I'm saying that's some marginal costs and variable costs, things like copper and steel, are the inputs used in producing homes. That's going to cause profits to fall. Let's build the diagram. I mean, in theory, I should be putting output of housing and things, but here's our cost and revenue diagram. Initially, the output is Q1, and they're selling homes for P1, and the unit cost is C. They're making quite a good, healthy profit there, shown by the yellow area. If costs go up, I've drawn quite a significant increase in costs, just to make the point, really. So costs rise to MC2, AC2. 
which means that for a given level of demand, the profit maximizing output goes up to Q, goes down to Q2. Let me just draw that in, that's a little mistake there. So Q1 goes to Q2, uh, which means, of course, that they can raise the price a little bit, but can you see the costs are much higher? So although the price rises to P2, the unit cost is C2. Just change that up to Q2 there. The unit cost is C2. Uh, and uh, although they've increased the price, can you see the profit is now this green area? The, gift, the difference between uh, price P2 and average cost AC2 on the new cost curves. This is quite a good diagram because it shows how a rise in costs does cause quite a big fall in profits. And this diagram would certainly do the job really well for an exam. Then you evaluate, however, the extent to which profits will fall depends in part on whether the rise in those bill costs mentioned in the extract is a temporary factor, a short term factor, perhaps due to the strong rebound in global GDP growth during 2021 and, and uh, those short term disruptions in the supply of Chinese steel and copper. So maybe it's a temporary factor. Uh, and also, some construction firms will be able to absorb most of the higher variable costs by raising their prices. So if costs go up, oftentimes firms lift their price, particularly if they estimate that the coefficient of price elasticity of demand, PED, is less than 1. Demand is price inelastic. So the impact on profits depends in part on the short-term temporary nature of the cost rise and also the extent to which the elasticity of demand for housing is less than 1. You don't have to build a long evaluation for these questions. As long as you evaluate the point you've made, that's fine. My second, my th KA point, my third paragraph out of four. A second factor affecting the profitability of construction companies, again, always go back to the question, is the strength of demand for new housing. And then a reference to the extract that demand for new homes is now back where we were in the two years before the pandemic, helped by the freezing of stamp duty which is a tax on the value of each house bought and sold. So show your knowledge, show the examiners you know what stamp duty is. So when demand is increasing, both the AR and MR, average and marginal revenue of construction firms will shift outwards. And this will lead to an expansion of the profit maximizing output, higher prices and an increase in profits. I go back to the extract and say that I think it was at Barrett Homes, was hoping to deliver a pre-tax profit of 520 million. Or was it, I think it was Barclay Homes, wasn't it? 10 million pounds a week. Of course, they're focused on London, where I suppose property prices are really quite high. This is because many home buyers are willing and able to pay more for newly completed homes, especially properties with perhaps a slightly bigger garden. And given what's happened in the pandemic, perhaps housing offering, offering office space for people working in part or in whole from home. Little, little application there to what's been happening to the demand for housing during the pandemic. Again, you only have to use one diagram, so you could use this one in your second point. So I'm to show what happens when revenue curves shift out. So here's our initial price, P1, output Q1. Demand shifts out to MR2, AR2. Can you see that shift in demand? Let's go back, shift in demand to there. For a given level of cost, the profit maximizing output goes up. They raise the price to P2, and there's the new level of profit. The extra profit in sense is shown there in green. So higher demand increases the profitability of construction companies. However, evaluation, it's not inevitable that revenues and profits will continue to rise, even when demand is strong, because we know that operating costs have been rising by 4 or 5%. And also we're told that the freeze on stamp duty was temporary. So when that tax cut comes to an end, market demand, especially from people entering the market for the first time, might, uh, might tail away, especially um, since high, high property prices have made buying a home much less affordable for people on average, even above average incomes. And then I'm sort of trying, trying to develop the point, mortgage interest rates at the moment are really low in the UK. You can get a five, 10 year mortgage for a very low percentage, but with inflation rising, the cost of home loans is also expected to rise perhaps when the Bank of England starts to raise base interest rates, and that will make housing even less affordable as the economy recovers from the pandemic. So you're challenging the idea that this rise in demand is going to be sustained over time. Mortgages could go up in price, 
uh, housing becomes unaffordable. And of course, that stamp duty reduction was temporary, uh, designed to stimulate the market. Well, there we go. Now, for 15, Mark, you don't need a conclusion. In fact, a very strong advice to my students, no introduction needed, no conclusion. Get straight into your KAA and evaluation paragraphs, because in an exam like this, there is no time to waste. We'll have more exam walkthroughs as we prepare for the next set of exams. Hopefully you thought this was a useful way of looking at this question on the housing market. So take care, look after yourselves, everybody. And see you all sometime soon.